Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today we are profiling shortleaf pine, Pinus echinata. Shortleaf pine has a surprisingly large distribution across the southeastern United States and it just barely dips into North Florida here. That large distribution is indicative of its adaptability to a fairly wide range of habitats. But here in North Florida, it's found in communities called shortleaf pine oak hickory forests, which are usually uplands with clay soil and uh, old fields as well. Shortleaf are also very long lived. They can live up to 400 years and they get very large as well up to 100 feet tall. The most distinguishing feature to identify shortleaf pine, Pinus echinata with, is its bark. Even from a distance, you can see these large, flat, reddish bark plates that are rectangular in shape. And that is very, very classic shortleaf pine. That's usually only noticeable on mature individuals like this one. When they're younger, it's a little bit rougher and flakier. But when you get up close to the bark, one key feature that is unique to this species, at least in Florida, are these resin pockets. You see these little holes in the bark? Those are resin pockets that seep the resin out, and that is a key identifying feature for this species. The needles are short, two to five inches long, and in fascicles of two to three. Bundles are fascicles, right? And these little fascicle sheaths on this species are also very small. They're very similar to the spruce pine and the sand pine needles, but the main difference is that this species has very straight needles. Spruce pine and sand pine also have short needles, but they are twisty. And you can see, even in the bundles from a distance, you can see how straight they are. They don't have that same twisty appearance. And the uh, twigs are rough, scaly. Shortleaf pine cones are very small. They're probably the smallest out of any of our species. They're smaller than the uh, Pinus glabra, the spruce pine, and smaller than the sand pine. And they are you know, ovoid in shape. And again, these are the mature female cones, not the male cones, which release the pollen in spring. And they are typically in pretty dense clusters on the branches like this. And they, when they fall, they're usually this grayish color because they hang on to their cones for two or more years. And so the cones age on the tree and by the time they fall they have this grayish color. When the cones are younger up on the trees above they do have little prickles on them which are you know you can feel but by the time they fall they usually have worn off and so they're not very noticeable. Shortleaf pine can sometimes be hard to identify. You'll find specimens that have some of the features but are not very as clearly defined as the one I showed today and that's because it hybridizes with loblolly pine, Pinus tata, and loblolly pine, its range has been expanded because it's the choice species of the timber industry, so it's been planted all over. And that has created more natural hybrids between loblolly and shortleaf. So if you find a species that has slightly different bark, but a lot of the same features of shortleaf, it could be a hybrid. Thanks for joining us for Terminology Tuesday again, and I hope you plant a shortleaf pine. I also wanted to mention this is the book that I was referring to, and it's definitely a great book for tree identification and keying out trees in the southeast, native trees of the southeast, an identification guide. You can find a used copy usually online somewhere.